Si acaso se me olvida, si acaso se me escapa Si acaso se me nubla la pasión en mi mirada Llévame al madero Al rincón de nuestro encuentro Llévame al lugar Donde empezó nuestra amistad Llévame a la Llévame a la cruz Si acaso se me olvida Si acaso se me escapa Si acaso se me nubla La pasión en mí Good morning and a great welcome to all of you here at the District Church. I'm so excited to be among you and to see each and every one of your beautiful faces. My name is Clara Debnam and I serve as the Executive Assistant here at the District Church. Hola Iglesia, mi nombre es Hugo Castro and I serve here as a small group leader and coach and I'm very excited to be with you today. As we conclude 21 days of prayer and fasting, we would like to end by sharing the Lord's table together. We're gonna do this in remembrance of what Christ did for us on the cross. He paid it all so that you and I and all of us can have abundant life. Later in our service, after we worship God with song and dance, our pastors are gonna lead us and we would love for you to be part of this. So please prepare to have the elements with you. You can yes. turn the volume up of your TV momentarily so you can listen to the rest of the announcements while you go to the kitchen. You can yes. grab a piece of bread. I'm grabbing my Colombian bread right, right now. now and some juice. And that's all you need just to have some bread and juice available. Uh, don't need to complicate it, so just keep them close to you. Yes, and even if you don't have bread or, or juice, grab the crackers, grab the water, you're good. It's just a matter of us coming together Amen. and uh, remembering yep. what God did for us on the cross. Every morning for the past three weeks, we have been gathering together at 7 a.m. to pray. And because our time together has been so glorious, we will continue praying together. So join us every Wednesday at 7 a.m. starting this week. The format will be the same. We will begin in prayer. And if you would like to stay on for personal prayer, you can do that. But there will be a link in the chat right now. So you can add that to your calendar uh, as well as uh, click the QR code for more details. And it, it's really easy. Like I'm doing it right now. I'm taking my phone and I'm putting like yes. Wednesday at 7 a.m. and repeat it every morning. Yes. I, if I do it during this week, I can do it at least one once a week, right? Exactly. So you know, you don't yeah. even have to sign up for seven days. It's just once a week now. Yeah. So. Uh, also, one of the things that is core of who we are at District Church is community. And that's why groups are the center of all that we do. We love community. We believe it is very important for our well-being and our faith journey. 
So this week, we're starting a weekly meetings again. It's usually on a weeknight, and it's about eight to, eight to 12 people who are studying God's Word to applying that we are taught here every Sunday. We develop friendships, and we seek ways to serve together. Most of our groups are meeting virtually right now, so you can join from wherever you are. If you'd like to learn more about groups and meet and getting connected with them, actually stay after the service today and you can join Pastor Aaron and our Director of Discipleship, Brian Carrier, for a small group virtual open house. You'll be able to learn a lot about our small groups. It's gonna be from 11.15 to 11.30, only 15 minutes. So if you wanna learn more about small groups, please stick around and join Aaron and, and Brian for that after the service. Uh, the link is gonna be in the chat at the close of the service so you can learn more about the small groups. Uh, and explore the different small groups around our area. Definitely get connected, guys. Uh, it was really helpful for me when I first moved yes. to DC almost five years ago. And I know there's also gonna be a lot of new people moving to the area as well. So let's be open and welcoming as much as we can. Yes, awesome, awesome. And speaking of community, we're all my single ladies. Now on February 14th at 2 p.m. Now hold up, hold up, Hugo. Is that Valentine's Day? I, I, February 4th, is that I Valentine's think so. Day? I, I should know that. I yeah. Are we literally having an event on Valentine's Day? You know what? I know that's what all of my single ladies are saying right now, but you ain't got no man, no way. So come join us at 2 p.m. We're going to have a dynamic and engaging conversation on living fully as a single woman in Christ. Amen. Our host, the Amen. District Church Single Women Small Group, will be putting this event on and we'll We'll discuss the myths of singleness, the shame that is attached to it, the power of community, and the joy that is found in singleness. So come ready to share your experiences and connect with women on fire for God. Amen. Amen to that. Something like that. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and finally, before we get to worship with Son, uh, I have a question for you, Clara. Uh, why do you give to the church? church? Why do you give monetarily? Okay. Now, Hugo. Can I be honest with you? 100%. Now look, this is between me. This ain't for, for all of our cousins on the other side of the screen now. Okay. So last week when I was encouraging everybody else to give, mm -hmm. I was convicted because I hadn't given not, not now mm -hmm. one time to the district church since I've been here in August. Can you imagine that? The very place that has um, been a blessing to my spirit each and every Sunday, the very place where the ministers has ministered and prayed for me and hadn't not gave one dime. Mm. So I was, I was convicted watching myself uh, behind a, a cell phone screen and said, you know what, Claire, you better pull, pull out that old dusty wallet and give. And so, so Hugo, last week, was my first time giving to the that's district amazing. church. That's a gift. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's the word of God. I mean, I personally also, I give because it's, it's part of tithing. It's part of like the blessing that God has given into my life. And we like to bless 3C and other ministries for the work that they're doing. And, uh, yes. you know, personally, we I, we don't kind of like trying to live like simply so we can free more of our money so we can bless the ministry of, and the work that other people are doing, not only here in DC, but around the world. Amen. So. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for all the blessings and, and the ways that you have shown up for the past 21 days, yes, every God. morning, for the Holy Spirit that, that came and, and just every morning while we were praying for healing, praying for unity, praying for reconciliation, praying for the, really for your peace and, yes, and your justice to flow the cities, of, the streets of this city, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for uh, the way our church has been able to shift uh the way to do church for almost a year lord and i praise lord that you you give us blessings that you give us favor so we can continue blessing other people i know it's been a hard year for all of us a hard 2020 and now 2021 but we serve the kingdom yes, we serve god. god we serve jesus and we know the end of the story yes so god. i pray lord that through the message today we'll be blessed and we'll know that the kingdom of god is here yes through lord. the through your son jesus christ and that uh, the Son of God is inviting us to be laborers with Him as He expands the kingdom, not only here in the city, in the United States, but around the world, Lord. Let us be humble. Let us be um, examine ourselves, examine our own sins, and at the same time, Lord, let us give us praise for who you are. Yes, God. Lord, free our people. Allow us to truly live in the calling that you put in our lives, Lord. 
And may we uh, be completely blessed by the sermon and the words that we're going to be hearing today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Bye, church. Good morning, TDC. So glad to be back here with you to worship the Lord. I just want to start this service with a prayer. So would you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for who you are and for who you've created us to be, Lord. We welcome you into this space, this home that we're dwelling, whether we find ourselves in our home or in our car, our living room. Lord, we know that you are here with us, God, and we just say, have liberty in this space. Take room in this space. May we decrease so that you can increase in us, God. Would you speak words to us, Lord, because our hearts are open, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing a new song. It's an antiphon, which basically means that there is a red scripture with a chorus that amens the truth of that word. So when you catch it, would you sing it with us? Here we go. Feel free to clap with us where you are. Hey. It goes like this. Great Jehovah, ruler of everything. You're our defender. You are the most high king. Would you sing it? Sing great Jehovah, ruler, ruler of everything. You're our defender. You are the most high king. So we sing, God, you reign. This King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Crazy, crazy.
you sit enthroned in heaven. So Lord, we thank you for your love. And we know we're called to your love. And that's only because of the sacrifice of your son. So we sing this. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. We love to oh, call your name.
There is freedom and liberty here. We simply have to call on the name of Jesus, the matchless name of Jesus, the holy name of Jesus. In response to that, God, what can we say? What can we do but to worship you? What can we say, what can we do but worship the living God that we serve? What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God you
church. It's good to be with you all today. I'm excited for us to take communion together for the first time yep, yep. in uh, 2021 yeah. and um, wish we were able to do this physically in person, but mm. trust that you found something, some bread or some juice um, at your house to be able to take um, and participate in this sacred moment together as a church body gathered together across our city even we have folks joining us in different parts of the country and the world today. Yeah. And so let's just center our hearts now as we prepare mm. um, to remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us on the yeah. cross, which is really the center of our faith. And yeah. Christ said, do this in remembrance of him. Mm. It's so easy for us as we even talk about boldness in this new year yeah. to forget how bold God was with us in wow. sending his yeah. one and only yeah. son into this earth. And so we know that we can be bold mm. because our righteousness doesn't come from ourselves, but it comes from Christ. Yes. He is our righteousness. Yes. And so we remember today his body mm. that was broken for us and his blood that was shed for us mm. for the forgiveness of our sins. And so on the night that Jesus was gathered with his disciples. When he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, mm. which is broken for you. He said, take and eat in remembrance of me. Take and eat. And on that same night, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the covenant in my new blood. This blood that is shed for you for the forgiveness of my sins. Take and drink. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this sacred moment that we're able to experience together as a church body, as followers of you. We thank you for your body that was broken for us 2,000 years ago on the, on the cross. Yes, your blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. And we know that now we can boldly approach your throne in worship. That we can boldly live out our faith in this world. Yes. Not because of anything yes. that we've done, but yes. because of what you've done for us. And so we join with the global church mm. as we take this Holy Communion, knowing that as we do so, mm. we proclaim your death yeah. until you come again. Yes. We thank oh. you for that assurance that you have not just come once to save, but you're coming back to set this world right mm. one day. Yes, God. And we eagerly await that. We pray it in Christ's name. Mm. Amen. 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 It's awesome. Well, you guys know that we have been going through a series this month called Be Bold. Yep. And this series really gives us a baseline oh. of how we are to live out um, our faith in our life this year. Oh. And so the first week uh, I talked about a bold faith. Yep. And then the next week, what did you I talk about? I did talk about bold uh, prayers. And I think that I like about a bold faith is just uh, reminding us of the hope that we have. Uh, and then we proceeded to talk about bold prayers. And we said that the honest prayer of a righteous person produces 
wonderful results. And that's how we need to pray this year, bold prayers, because we, we learned that okay prayers yield okay results. And then mm-hmm. Pastor Amy uh, last week shared about bold proclamation. Bold proclamation, Acts chapter 4, being filled with the Holy Spirit yeah. to boldly proclaim the gospel. And uh, so it's just God's been speaking to us. We've been gathering for prayer, just yeah. finishing this 21 days. Oh, it's been amazing. Be awesome. Seeing answered <laughs> to prayers. Yeah. So, uh, so this morning, Pastor Kevin is going to be sharing with us about bold service. Yep. And so would you join me in praying for him as mm. he prepares to share God's word? Yep. Um, God, we thank you so much uh, for Pastor Kevin, and we thank you for the way that you have set him apart for your service and called him into your ministry and the way that you've called him and his family here to the district church. And I pray, God, for a fresh filling of your Holy Spirit yes. upon him yes, Lord. as he challenges us to be bold Mm. in how we serve others. And so yes, would you God. open up our hearts and our minds to receive your word and to hear what your spirit is saying to us today. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Aaron. And do not miss next week as we conclude this series. Uh, he's going to be teaching us about bold generosity. And it's just a reminder of how God has blessed us as a community as we go into this year. Now, I want to take us back to uh, the first followers of Jesus better known as the disciples. And I hope that as we look at their story, we can learn a few things that will help us be bold in serving one another. And not just today, but this week, this month, and even beyond. You find their story in the book of Acts, and this is the fifth book in the New Testament that talks extensively about the beginning of Christ's movement. You see, most of us are familiar with this story around this time. You know, the Romans crucified Jesus, he dies, he's buried in the tomb, and then on the third day, he resurrects. And he spends a few days with his disciples, and then he ascends to heaven. So most of us are familiar with this story. And that right there, I want to say that right right there is the anchor of our faith, that Jesus Christ died for us. He paid it all. In fact, when you read Romans 6.23, it says that the wages of sin is death, and he paid it all because the gift of God is eternal life. 1 Peter 3.18 says, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. And I say to us, District Church, that our boldness this year is not anchored in emotions. Our boldness this year is not in feel-good factors or systems that have been created by men or women, rational thoughts or imagination. Our boldness this year is in Him who overcame the world. He conquered death, and now He's seated on His throne. So in the next few minutes, what I want to do is actually just sort of uh, uh, give us the context, you know, uh, you know, build the context for us, and, and then we shall bring it home for us. So, so track with me. There's a narrative that I want to share with us so that you can be able to understand how this topic is so critical for us as we journey throughout this year. You see, Jesus leaves his disciples behind with the mandate of making more disciples, you know, more followers of Jesus. And you find in Matthew 28, 19, 20, he says, Therefore, Go and make disciples of all nations, you know, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you today. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And Jesus affirms what he means by with you till the very end of the age. Because when you turn over to Acts chapter 1, in fact, we're going to be camping at Acts chapter 1 and uh, and chapter 2. So please get your Bibles and just turn uh, to Acts chapter 1 verse 4. He says this from verse 4, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized, this is John the Baptist, baptized with water, but in a few days you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When you jump over to verse 8, and I love, this is one of my famous, uh, favorite verses, you know, uh, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The helper will be the Holy Spirit, God himself will enable them, the disciples, the followers, to do greater things, and they will become his witnesses to the ends of the earth. So following these instructions, the disciples in Acts chapter 2, when you turn over to Acts chapter 2, and this is where we're going to camp a lot uh, throughout this message. On the day of Pentecost, verse 2, we are told, all the believers were meeting together in one place. And then suddenly, 
there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or, or, or tongues of fire appeared and, 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 and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Now, I want to say to us, this scripture, that this was crazy, unusual stuff. There was unusual activity going on in this room. And, and like typical human beings, you know, people came running to see for themselves what was going on. And they were extremely puzzled. You see, there were people from different parts of the world gathered in Jerusalem at this time. And, and what puzzled them is to hear their very own languages being spoken by this small bunch of people from Galilee. Now, here's something that you need to understand. Galileans were actually known as poor speakers. So, so this, and they were not just mumbling random things. They were talking about the wonderful things that God has done uh, uh, in the languages of all the people who are gathered there. Everyone could be able to hear for themselves that, and, and, and that's the power of the Holy Spirit. I, I love the fact that amid the chaos, in the midst of the chaos, the people were gathered in amazement of the wonders of God. Isn't that our testimony that even this year, in this time, that even in the midst of all that is happening around us, uh, across the world, that we can still gather in celebration of what God has done. But I want to say this, it is only the disciples who had encountered this power. The, the audience hadn't. And that's why in verse 12 we are told, they, they, they stood there amazed and perplexed. And their question was, what can this mean? They, they, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them and they said, they are just drunk. That's all. You know, uh, guys, haters did not start their career just recently. They started way back in the day. So these guys were just hating. You know, however, the apostle Peter uh, uh, stepped forward and, and gave the very first recorded church sermon in history. And, and you've got to love this guy, Peter, because we are told, not long ago, we were told that Peter was so scared of being associated with Christ that he denied him, not once, not twice, but three times he denied Jesus Christ. And now because of the Holy Spirit that is in him, he is boldly proclaiming the news of the Lord. You know, to be bold this year, I tell us, District Church, that we need the Holy Spirit in us. Our boldness is anchored in that, that we can be able to, to stand out by faith as we see what uh, uh, Apostle Peter does. When you go to verse 14 of Acts chapter 2, it says this, Peter speaking to them, listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and, and, and residents of Jerusalem, make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk as some of you are assuming. It's nine o'clock in the morning and it's much too early for that. Then verse 16, no, what you see was predicted very long ago by the prophet Joel. And you find this in Joel chapter 2, the book of Joel in the Old Testament. And it says this, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all the people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs in the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. And he continues with the someone talking about the plan of God sending his son Jesus, and he was crucified and he resurrected, ascended to heaven, and now he sits in his glorious position as both the Lord and the Messiah. And it was such a powerful message for the people listening that verse 37 tells us Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they say to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And I want to say this is the power of the Holy Spirit at work here. Because the boldness of Peter is so admirable. And he says to them, Each of you must repent of your sins. And, and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And at the end of that sermon, something amazing happened. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day. About, check this out, 3,000 in all. What a powerful story. We see the prophecy in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 getting fulfilled on day 1. 
When, when, when Jesus told his disciples that, that they were to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon them and, and they shall be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And we see here the Apostle Peter being a witness, sharing the story of Christ. And it gets even better because check out what this group of people started doing. Verse 42, when you go to verse 42, it says this, all the believers devoted, and I want you to highlight that word, you know, mark it somewhere because I'm going to come back to that. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, which we've just done earlier today in the service, and to prayer. And then listen to this. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions. They shared their money with those in need. They, they, they worshipped together at the temple each day. They met in homes for the Lord's Supper and, and, and shared their meals with great and, uh, and, 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 and joy and generosity. You know, all this while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And then look at this. The Lord, the Lord, each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who are being saved. Guys, let me, let me explain this. Let me sort of give you context just in case you've missed what I've, I've, I've just read. If you're visiting the city of Jerusalem, this was a very unusual happening. There was a new group in town that everybody was talking about. People might have had different opinions about them, but the bottom line is that they were stirring up something in the city. Now, I, I, I'm sure there are some who probably call, you know, labeled them as cultic, you know, but when you encountered them, you know, there was something unusually good about them. It didn't matter which street you turned to. You know, there were mumblings about these people. By this time, you'll have been dying for a chance to know more or have an encounter with them. And so you make your way to their ministry center on O Street. Some of you will get that another time. And the minute you enter, there was just a different atmosphere. It was just like you were in a different world. Everyone was friendly, generous, passionate, and they all seemed high. The, the preacher was bringing it about this guy named Jesus and, and the huge difference he makes. And, and, and the different people were sharing their, their testimonies, their miracles, you know, uh, what God was doing for them. And it seemed too good to be true. But here's what even shocks you the most. Their love for each other <laughs> and genuine care for each other's needs. And you know why that was shocking? They were obviously from different tribes, ethnic groups, different race, people who ordinarily would have nothing to do with each other, but they seemed to genuinely care for each other. People were donating their clothes and even selling their land and houses in order to share with those among them who did not have enough. No, no wonder so many people were joining them every day. The poor were getting their needs met. The lonely were finding friends. The sick were being healed. Former criminals were finding acceptance. Prostitutes were being rehabilitated. Marriages were being restored. In short, Jerusalem's problems were being solved right there, one person at a time, as everyone contributed their strengths, as everyone contributed their resources. And despite your initial skepticism, you might end up saying, I'm not sure that I believe these guys, or I believe their teachings, but I sure want to be a part of a community like this. This church was radically confronting the social order of the day with their love and service to each other. And ultimately, this transformation, this revival will spread throughout the entire Roman Empire. For example, years later, Christians will face great persecution by a Roman emperor named Julian. And, and his purpose was to exterminate Christianity and return Rome to the worship of its ancient gods. But it was proving to be very difficult to eliminate this faith. And, and the biggest reason <clears throat> that he gives was the sharing and caring that the Christians exhibited in in an angry letter that he, he wrote to his uh, priest, Julian wrote this and he says, Why do we not see that it is the Christians' benevolence to strangers, their care for the graves of the dead, and, and, and the pretended holiness of their lives that have done most to increase unbelief in the Roman gods? For it is disgraceful that when no Jew ever has to beg, and the impious Christians support not only their own poor, but ours as well, all men see that our people lack aid from us. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, moved his people to love and care for one another in a way that shook Jerusalem. 
the followers of Jesus, the church, were meeting their own needs and solving the problems of the society. You see, when Jesus was about to leave his disciples, his urgent command to his followers was not for them to have great services, uh, worship services, or for them to have amazing social strategies. No, the commandment that he gave them in John 13, 35 was to love one another. And he says, so now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. And I want to say what was happening in Jerusalem was proving to the world that this group of people was different. They were different. And not only that, it transformed many more and caused them to live differently. What can we learn from the very first church about bold service? Let me bring it home for us. My prayer, my prayer is that we can begin to see pockets of what happened in Jerusalem thousands of years ago here at the church. That, 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 that we shall be committed to the mission that God has given us. Being joyful in gathering together, you know, uh, uh, being joyful in, 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 in uh, whether it's online uh, church, whether it's in person gathering, and we're excited about that, that every week when we gather, we are joyful about that. Being generous with caring for each other and, and sharing what we have, being bold to upset the social order of the day and serve each other, that the world will be moved towards Jesus. But for that to happen, you need to make a decision. You need to make a decision to engage. Because you see in verse 7, the congregation listening to Peter, it's, it tells us Peter's words pierce their hearts and they say to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? You see, many of us have been, uh, and I want to say this in, uh, b- b- with all due respect, many of us have been inoculated by inspiration. That even listening to a someone like this has become too boring for you or, or common for you. In fact, you've even figured out how, you know, for yourself, how the ending is going to be and what I'm going to ask you to do. And so you either switch off or you disengage and move on to the next thing. Uh, 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 our hearts have become so hardened uh, or, or, or become overwhelmed with everything else. There are so many options right now that we can look at. There are so many things that we are listening to. You know, our hearts have become so hardened and, uh, with everything and overwhelmed with everything that is happening around us that we miss out on what God is trying to do through you. But I like the attitude of this congregation in Jerusalem because they did not just allow themselves to receive a dose of inspiration and then move on to the next thing. They made a decision to engage because they asked, what should we do? And this is a question that tells me that they were leaning forward. They were ready to go. They were ready to roll up their sleeves and get in there. And it just doesn't end there because in verse 42 we are told they devoted themselves. The word devoted means give all or a large part of one's time resources either to a person, activity, or cause. In fact, another translation says very loving or loyal. And I want to say to us, District Church, bold service is devoting ourselves to one another. And I will add that bold service is devoting ourselves to one another while shining the light on God. Not on us, but on God. This is beyond social justice and and, and giving of an hour a week to serve during a Sunday service. This is giving your best. This is giving your all to serve God's people as you bring glory to Him, shining the light on God through our service. You see, many of us serve, but oftentimes it is to shine a light on us. And and, and you you know how you know that you know you want the light to shine on you? Here's a question. How do you feel when someone doesn't acknowledge what you've done? When you serve, how do you feel when, when one doesn't acknowledge the, the hard work that you've put in, whatever it is that you've done? That feeling right there describes to you where you're shining your light, whether it's on you or on God. Bold service is devoting ourselves to one another while shining the light on God. I I want you to realize that what was happening in Jerusalem is a highly unlikely story. Friends, we are naturally selfish. Before we even give or share to those in need, most of us begin to think, how will this affect me? 
what, what, are, what am I losing? How, how will I be inconvenienced? Because selfishness is our natural state. Selflessness, on the other hand, is unnatural. You know, seeking the good and wellness of others is unnatural. And that's why we need Jesus in our lives. That's why you need Jesus. May God break us out of our natural selfish cocoons and make us part of a radical community that changes our cities through the power of love. Bold service is devoting ourselves to one another while shining the light on God. You see, friends, I want to say this. Let me, let me push it even further. The, the pews of the 21st century church is chock full of very smart people. I mean, I listen to the conversation that people have about church and the issues and, and troubles within it. I, I hear their arguments and, and positions, you know, and, and read their articles, you know, and I, and I see their, their comments on social media. And I am convinced that we live in a time where God's people are some of the most smartest, most incisive, and clearest thinkers. However, today's church needs more doers. Need more people who can do. I, I feel like we have, a, we have great minds. People who spend their time philosophizing and theologizing about the church and what it should be doing. You know, you know uh, 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 writing wise sounding articles and, and holding clever positions and arguments. There's a clear abundance of that. Just turn on to the next stop and you can be able to find articles on this. What is in such short supply in the body of Christ today is not great minds but great hearts. People who bleed with love and care for each other. Today we have too many people who do the talking and the thinking and less who do the loving and the serving. Bold service is devoting ourselves to one another while shining the light on God so that He can receive the glory. I put it to you that church doesn't need any more consultants. People who say, why haven't they done this or that or think about this? You know, consultants are great, but I suggest to you that all those positions are taken. There are no more vacancies. What the church desperately needs now is not those who ask, what is the church doing about reaching out to those leaving the church as much as it needs people who will say, I am going to devote myself and do what needs to be done so that more people can know the Lord. The church does not need people who ask, what is the church doing about the mess in our society as much as it needs people who say, I am going to serve and make a difference where I am. The church has enough people who are asking, why is in the church doing more to safeguard our kids and our teens. It has too few people who will say, here is what I'm going to do to disciple the next generation. Those positions are vacant here at the district church and desperately in need of filling. I would like to say to us, that we have many vacancies in the church. The Apostle Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. He says, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. What he's really saying is this, every single person within this congregation has been given a unique gift, which is not for them, but for, it is for the serving of the body of Christ, to serve the body of Christ so that it is built up, so that it is strengthened. And I mean everyone, whether you have been a believer for five minutes or for 50 years. If you don't know the Bible and even how the Bible looks like, you don't even know the books of the Bible, this is completely new to you, or even you have a theological PhD. Everyone, I mean everyone, once you're a part of the body, God wants to activate you because bold service is devoting ourselves to one another while shining the light on God. On, on God. The glory has to go to God, not for us. I love watching the European Premier League and Arsenal is my team. Any Arsenal fans out there, please just give me a thumbs up on the chart. Um, uh, I, I, and I know a lot about the Arsenal team. <laughs> and at times, you know, I get animated while watching. Uh, in fact, my boys will give you a, a good story about how animated I can get when I'm watching soccer. Uh, uh, because I, I believe I know what they should be doing on, on the field, you know. If only they could listen to me, then they would probably be winning all the games. And all sports fans know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, we operate the same way with church. We have become professional spectators. We become professional fans who cannot play the game, but can tell you all about it. They are professional Christians who know the word, 
They, they know the word from Genesis to Revelation, but their lives have no power. When you serve, you move from observer to a participator, from spectator to a servant, from a consumer to someone who's committed, someone who's engaged, someone who's devoted, someone who's causing uh, uh, impact in this world for the glory of God. Bold service is devoting ourselves to one another while shining, giving the glory to God. Pastor, what should we do then? I had no idea you would ask that question. In fact, I'm so impressed that you did ask that question. And I say, devote yourself to this community. Love this church. Be loyal. Show up here every Sunday. Let's engage. Let's connect with one another. Show up on Sunday. Invite friends and family. And, and even when we get back to in-person gathering, and I'm glad because every, every week gone is a week closer to us gathering to, back in person, I say show up in our weekly groups. If you're not part of a group, you know, be part of a group. Engage with this community. Boldly serve. I know that COVID has complicated how some of us can be able to serve and engage in this, but that should not be the reason for you to stop in serving and engaging and devoting yourself to this community. I, I believe that God has given some of you creativity. There are some things that you can be able to do. You, you have the ability to think outside of the box of how we can continue to advance God's kingdom even in this season. There are many opportunities. You, you, you probably have an idea of what we need to be doing as a church in a better way. So don't be a professional spectator. Come in, roll up your sleeves and say that this is what I need to do so that I can advance God's kingdom. We're going to have an email that is going to be there and you can be able to send in just in case you want to engage with us, especially when it comes to serving and you haven't had an opportunity. There's going to be an email there that you can be able to share uh, 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 and, and even connect with us. But, but, but I want to I wanna learn this message by inviting you to sort of imagine with me. I, I, imagine with me a, a community of people who genuinely love each other regardless of color, regardless of race, regardless of age or even gender. A community that shies away from the shallow, generic conversations and instead lean into each other so much so that when someone is in need, we will know and go even the extra mile to help them. A community who will give out to uh, others, you know, whether it's your extra clothes, you know, uh, uh, whether it's extra stuff that you have in your house, instead of you just holding this thing. Some of us, when we go through our, our houses, we'll find that there's a ton of things that other people are in need of, but we are still holding. Some of us are driving around four or five cars. Maybe the Lord is asking you to bless someone today with that who's in need, a family that is in need. Uh, imagine with me a community that is generous with information, whether it is investments or information about jobs. Imagine with me a community that is generous with our skills and expertise, serving others in our community, you know, without taking advantage of each other. Imagine with me, District Church, a community that will not just send a text when someone is bereaved, but we shall be known for the ministry of presence. Show up and be there. That when someone is grieving, when someone is struggling with a situation, we don't just call them and say, hey, I'm praying with you, I'm, I'm, I'm standing with you, but we can be able to show up and be there for them. Some of these things are countercultural. District church, district church, my prayer is that we become a church that is so useful to each other and our neighborhoods. Our neighbors, Regardless of what they believe, whether they are Hindu, whether they are Muslim or Buddhist, or even atheists, will be so attracted to us because we are such a blessing to them. Who in this community will say, because of you, I am. Who, who will look back one day and say, I am glad that Kevin devoted himself and did not give up on our community. Whose family will be saved this year because you made a choice today to accept the clarion call to devote yourself and be all in for God's people and for God's glory. I say to us, District Church, bold service is devoting ourselves to one another while shining the light on God. I want us to pray. And, and here's how I want to Pray because I, 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 there's, there's life in, in, in the words that you speak. And, and wherever it is that you are, you know, if you can be able to stand, if you're in a place where you can stand, stand. 
uh, if you're not able to, but I want you to declare these words after me because this is a prayer that I want us to say. I want you to declare over your life. And then I'm going to pray for us as we end this message. Say after me, God, I want to be part of this community that you're using to bring godly transformation. Give me a love for my church. Give me a love for my city. Give me different eyes to see the needs around me. In fact, open my eyes to see the needs, to see the opportunities to be a blessing to others. And Lord, give me the courage to respond to the needs that you have already equipped me to do something about. Lord, give me a love that is greater and beyond myself. That I will... <laughs> In fact, <laughs> some of us, need, you, you need an understanding uh, uh, and pray, God, give me an understanding of the love that you've deposited in me. That I will stop just living for myself and for my ambitions and for my dreams, but I will live for your people and for your glory. God, help me to live out my purpose through the church that you have called. I want to end by praying. There are those of us who have been serving. I want to commend you. I want to affirm you. And I pray that may God continue to encourage you. May God continue to inspire you as you serve. I know that sometimes we go through difficult moments, but may you not lose sight of the, the bigger picture of what God is trying to do and, and, and how God is using the church to transform the world and bring uh, uh, men and women to Him. Uh, I, I want to affirm you and, and say that may God give you special strength to keep at it. Yes, there are moments that have been difficult. Yes, men and women will always disappoint. Some of us have probably even been hurt or wounded. And I want to pray for healing at this very moment. That, 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 that because uh, past someone disappointed you or because someone hurt you or because uh, uh, someone said something uh, that has caused you to feel a particular way that is not very godly, uh, I, I want to pray over you right now and ask that may healing just flow through your body. May God just heal your heart right now. He'll uh, uh, just restore you to the joyful self, self that you are, that you can be able to give of yourself to this community. So may God just give you deliverance. And then I'll, I'll, I pray even for those of us who probably have a negative attitude towards the church, even as you're listening to this message, uh, for you everything, the, all the information that you have soaked in, everything that you have read about the church, what you've experienced about the church has caused you to have a bad taste in your mouth, has caused you to have uh, very filtered you know, images of, of what the church or who the church is. And, and I want to pray that uh, may God just begin a new thing in, in you right now, uh, that you will begin to see even your part to play uh, uh, your, your, the responsibility that you have even to uh, engage in a community, that even just the importance of you walking uh, in this journey in the midst of a community like this. And so I, I invite you to, to, to sit in that tension. I know sometimes it's uncomfortable, but I want to pray that God will give you the grace and the strength to sit in that and to go through that because God will bring healing right there where you are. And so, Lord, I thank you. I want to pray for the anointing of the church, the very first uh, uh, church in Jerusalem. And, and I want to ask that, Lord, may we begin to see that anointing here at the district church. That, Lord, you will bless us. I want to ask that let this be a church that is filled with people who are generous with their time, serving boldly, oh God. That, Lord, we realize that it is not just for us. You haven't gifted us. You haven't blessed us just for us, oh God. Father, we are a channel of blessing. That, Lord, many will come through our doors and they will be blessed because we chose to roll up our sleeves. We chose to devote ourselves, gave our all all so that they can too be blessed and they too can experience you. So God, I pray that let there just be a good, a, a sweet atmosphere, an appealing atmosphere within the district church community that many will come and many will know you. Many will see you through our relationships, through this community and through the love that we have for each other. So Lord, I thank you and I praise you for the word that you've, shared, you've given unto us today. And I do pray that even as I've shared this, Lord, we shall be responsive as the church was back then. And that Lord, our 
we, our, our posture will be one where we lean in, we lean forward, and Father, roll up our sleeves and engage. So Lord, move us. Holy Spirit, move us to engage in what we need to do. And we pray this believing and trusting. And all God's people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you and be devoted to your community. Si acaso se me olvida, si acaso se me escapa, si acaso se me nubla la pasión en mi mirada. Si acaso se me nubla la pasión en mi vida